What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering the Ginsburg Gambit for E4 players against the Sicilian Defense. A very fun chess opening option, especially if you are a Sozin attack type player. We're actually gonna start off with the main line of Knight F3 and then break through in the center of the board and following taking off the centralized pawn with our minor piece, most of the time you're gonna see knight f6 attacking that pawn on e4. And usually here, white will play a move like knight c3 or bishop d3, both of which develop our pieces and defend the pawn on e4. But with the Ginsburg Gambit, we play the crazy looking move, bishop c4, not really caring about this pawn on e4. Now I do wanna mention that by playing bishop c4, we're not really making black take this pawn. And because of this, you have to be ready to play a Sozin attack type game. I mean, right here, black could play a move like knight c6, or even go into the knight or, or dragon type systems. But really by playing bishop c4, instead of knight c3 first, we are giving black the opportunity to take that pawn on e4, which is what we're gonna cover in this video. I actually don't think that taking this pawn is a mistake from black, but we now have the opportunity to play bishop takes f7 check, and all of a sudden black needs to be extremely well prepared for the chess opening theory here. There are a ton of traps that black can easily fall into. Now, first off, if black doesn't feel like taking the bishop and wants to play king c7 and try to run away with king c7, well, we now have queen g4 check attacking both the king and the knight on e4, and we're simply about to go up a piece. Now, if king takes f7 is played, I know some of you are probably wondering what on earth is white doing? I mean, we just gave up a centralized pawn. We just gave up our light squared bishop. What are we about to do? Well, now we have queen h5 check attacking this king on f7. Really, the main idea here is that in either case of g6 or king g8, we have queen d5 attacking the king and getting our piece back. Now, I do want to mention the move king f6 does hold on to the knight on e4, but it's just a huge mistake because we now have knight c3, now with actually two threats of mate and one with knight d5 and knight e4, both of which would end this game. And if a move like g6 is played, we can now take that knight off the board. And after a move like king f7, continue with queen d5 check. I mean, look at the centrality of our pieces. We can now continue with knight g5 and with both of our knights and our queen really clamping down on the light squares of e6 and f7 this position is resignable for black. So one of black's three legal moves with king f6 is simply a huge mistake. Yes, black holds onto the piece, but black's king is about to get checkmated, which is really what the game of chess is all about. What about the moves g6 and king g8? Let's first cover the move king g8. Against this, we now have queen d5 check attacking the king. If bishop e6, well, we just take the bishop and we have ourselves a game over. And if e6, we can now take that knight off the board. And as y'all can see, both of these pawns are kind of weak right now. I mean, our knight and queen, both very centralized, are really putting some pressure on that e6 pawn and following a move like d5 we can now play queen e2 and i like white's game here if you plug this into a computer program it's going to put it at around even but i think that this is a very difficult position to play with as black and as white our game plan is actually pretty simple we're going to just naturally develop our pieces with moves like knight c3 if our knight on d4 ever gets attacked we can always play knight f3 continue to put our dark squared bishop on really any of these squares i mean d2 e3 f4 putting some pressure on e5 g5 attacking the queen these are all good options depending on what black plays we can also castle king side put our rooks on e1 and d1 and we're going to have ourselves a very nice middle game position so that covers the move king g8 in which case we're going to play queen d5 check take that knight off of e4 and just continue with natural developmental chess with knight c3 develop our bishop castle king side put our rooks right in the center of the board and really try to go after those two very weak centralized pawns what about the move g6 well against this again we have queen d5 check attacking the king and that knight on e4 and in this position black really does have a lot of options black can play e6 black can bring the king to f6 g7 or e8 i really think the only move that gives black a fighting chance is king g7 but it's very easy for black to play a move like king e8 i mean why not just go back home but against this white has a big attacking edge as we take that knight off the board continue after a move like bishop g7 with knight c3 and notice how hard it is for black to develop in this position i mean this knight on b8 for example it can't come to c6 because well we just take it off the board 
followed by queen takes c6, and we're going to be up a pawn in the middle game. And if knight d7 is played, this is even worse because we could play knight e6, attacking both the queen on d8 and this bishop on g7. That would be a completely winning position for white. And if a move like a6, just slowly trying to develop, trying to protect that b5 square, we can now play bishop g5, really putting some pressure on that e7 pawn. We're now winning the castle queen side, bring our h rook to e1, and we're going to have ourselves a one game. And if a move like queen c7, looking to support this knight c6 move well knight d5 options are always available attacking the queen and with all the pressure that we currently have on e7 black can resign this position i'm not going to go through all the moves that black can play in these situations but that just shows how easy black can fall into trouble just by playing a move like king e8 again i think black's only option here that gives them a fighting chance is king g7 in which case we could take that knight on e4 and again in this position black needs to play e5 if black doesn't play e5 right now we're going to have a huge space advantage a huge attacking edge and control of this e6 square on top of that this pawn on e7 is making black's position very cramped in fact the bishop on f8 can't even move so let's cover the move e5 but keep in mind if e5 is not played white has a much better game similar to the last variation knight c6 can't be played because we take the knight off the board and knight d7 can't be played because we could actually play knight e6 with check and then capture that queen on d8 so following e5 we can now play knight f3 and i plug this into a computer program and with perfect play black plays knight c6 and after knight c3 plays bishop f5 i mean black really does need to try to be aggressive in this position but white is completely okay we're going to play queen a4 and against d5 play bishop g5 attacking that queen on d8 and following queen d6 castle queenside now yes black does have a pretty good space advantage in the center of the board with both of these pawns but both of these pawns are very hard to hold on to i mean the very next move let's say black plays a move like d4 which is really more or less forced because of our minor piece on c3 and rook on d1 doubling up on that centralized pawn we can now play rook he1 and if you plug this into a computer program the only move that gives black a slight advantage is bishop e7 but even after this i personally would much rather be the white pieces from a practical standpoint yes black does have a space advantage right in the center of the board but these pawns are very vulnerable to attack and black has some catching up to do in terms of development i mean right now our knight on f3 is attacking both e5 and d4 the pawn on d4 is pinned to the rook on d1 and our rook on e1 is really putting some pressure on that centralized e5 pawn knight e4 attacking the queen on d6 is coming soon and we always have queen b5 ideas attacking both b7 and e5 i mean i'm just saying if this is the best that black can do against the ginsburg gambit and we still have ourselves a very fun position to play with and some really good attacking chances especially in the center of the board and against this very vulnerable king on g7 i think that this gambit is pretty fun and very sound at least compared to most if you guys would like to learn more about the Snyder Variation, a fun and very strong system against the Sicilian defense, click the video to the left. If you'd like to learn more about the Beaver Variation, an absolutely crazy chess opening against the Sicilian defense, click the video to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'm wishing y'all a great day. Peace.